Welcome to another edition of Dan Factoids. In this edition, we will be addressing the questions posed by a diver about multi-day, multi-level diving, interruptions of diving during a multi-day week, where the risks are, and what depths they recommend. Keep watching. We received the following letter from a diver. Dear Dan, thank you for all the amazing informative materials that you provide. Well, that's a pleasure. We are Dan members and encourage all divers to join too. Thanks for the great work. My question, we and many other dive buddies do multiple dives over multiple days and after reading the emails and blogs and some of the articles on the issue we had some questions. If I'm diving on air and wish to make the most of my diving holiday doing multiple dives but want to remain safe, what do you recommend in terms of how many dives a day, maximum depths, surface intervals and how often should one take a non-diving day? And secondly, if one were doing it on nitrox, how does that affect the same things? Dives a day, maximum depths, surface intervals, and how often to take a non-diving day? Well, thank you for the excellent questions. You won't believe it, you actually prompted us to go to our databases that's Dan Southern Africa, Dan Europe and Dan America looking at the Project Dive Exploration and Dive Safety Laboratory data to be able to give you a founded, data founded answer. And this is what we came up with. And the answers are not absolute, but let me take them one by one. Your first question, how many dives per day? Well, I'd like to start by saying that dive computers, irrespective of how fancy they are and what models they are and what algorithms they use, really can't track more than two dives per 24 hours. Manufacturers may disagree, but the reality is that the variables become too great to really keep track of what is actually going on in the body. Now having said that, the incidence of decompression illness is low, 1 to 4 per 10,000 dives. So computers are doing their job, but just realize their limitations. And so, to answer your question officially, no more than 2 dives a day would be the safest recommendation we would offer you uh, based on the information we have and the data we have. The second question was, what about maximum depth? Well, that's a complex and multifaceted question. Again, simplistically speaking, the most information we have is on dives shallower than 24 meters. Now, there does seem to be a threshold at 24 meters in that dives shallower than 24 meters are really associated with serious decompression illness or decompression illness that doesn't respond well to treatment. Now bear in mind of course even five meters can cause arterial gas embolism and that can easily be fatal. We're talking about the typical forms of decompression illness that we see at recompression facilities. So to answer your question 24 meters is probably the best maximum dive to go for unless there really is a project that requires you to go deeper. I can build into this the issue of reverse profiles and I just like to mention because that's a big topic on its own that the difference between dives if you dive shallow before deep should not be more than 12 meters. So if you do decide on reverse profiles, please make sure you get all the information from that workshop and don't just read it in isolation. A very important point that builds on this is that dive computers actually don't do very well 
in crediting you for slow or ultra slow ascents deeper than 15 meters. And that is because of the tissue uh, levels that they monitor, etc., etc. So, in our findings, it really doesn't reward divers or benefit divers significantly to have ultra slow ascents. It's better to follow the recommended ascent rate as your computer would recommend typically and once at 15 meters to exercise a bit to uh, move the limbs so that uh, the circulation can really eliminate the inert gas more effectively and then do the same at five or three meters depending on where you do your safety stop and last but not least there's a tendency after doing your safety stop to bolt for the surface and that may not necessarily mean going from five meters boom back to the surface we even want to mention the last meter you know that last 1.1 to 1 atmosphere drop is a significant gas gradient and we would like to encourage divers to take it slow even for that last meter it's worth eliminating excess inert gas in water it's more effective in water than out of the water. So use the time wisely. So next, how about ideal surface intervals? Again, not much data, but most training agencies advise at least an hour. Now, if we look at circulating Doppler bubble data, they only settle after about three hours, two to three hours. And so the recommendation based on physiology would probably be two to three hours. But we realize that that is not always practical. And again, the incidence of decompression illness is low. So don't exercise in between dives, that's for sure. And certainly pause for at least an hour before going for your second dive and if it can be longer two to three hours is what we would recommend then there was the question about what dives should one then there was the question about what about taking a break during a series of dives well our data indicates that the most cases of decompression illness occur on the first day and on the fourth day. So looking at the information we have at hand, our recommendations would be that on the first day one should dive conservatively. 18 meters, don't push it, do even one dive and just familiarize yourself. Even if you're a seasoned diver, just take it easy on that first day. And then secondly, if you can interrupt a multi-day series, the fourth day is the day that decompression illness seems to spike a bit and the accumulation of inert gas is more likely to cause decompression illness. Now the same questions you asked on air were asked on nitrox and I don't want to address all of them uh, over again but I do want to say the following. If one dives nitrox as air, then obviously it makes it safer. In other words, you are essentially diving shallower, at least in terms of equivalent air depth. Now, considering the oxygen limits, etc., etc., and depending on what nitrox mixture you choose, again, the recommendation would be to stay within the equivalent air depths of about 24 meters that's what we can take from the data and don't forget of course the flying after diving recommendations where we have a single dive 12 hours more than one dive 18 hours multi-day dives more than 18 hours and we can't say exactly how long but certainly more than 18 hours even more so if it's decompression diving so look at all the information and I hope that we were able to answer at least some of your questions and we encourage you to continue asking them 
and uh, we welcome the interaction with our members. Subscribe to this channel and uh, keep watching. Until next time, safe diving. Preview.